Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, or if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Justin Lamb. I am a figure skating fan, and sometimes I like to come on video and talk about our favorite sport. Now today's video will be a recap on the 2019 Skate America, the first competition in the Grand Prix series of this new season, so it's a very exciting. But before I start recapping the actual competition, I just wanted to say a few things. The first is thank you so much to my fellow skating fans who watch my videos, who continuously come back and support me. This will be my sixth Skate America recap in a row. I started doing these videos regularly with the 2014 Skate America recap and just thank you so much for continuously watching my videos. There are plenty of other skating bloggers out there right now and you guys still choose to support me. I'm actually friends with some of them on Twitter and everyone is doing their own thing and everyone is amazing. So kudos to you if you also have a channel and you're watching this right now. I appreciate you. I'm also pretty self-aware so I know I'm not the most analytical person or thought-provoking. I do stick to mainly recaps and I thank you for allowing me to authentically be myself. The next thing I wanted to say was <laughs> I saw a tweet the other day that said that someone doesn't like it when a skating fan doesn't keep up with the sport during the off season. And not gonna lie, I am totally that person. I have checked out from the sport over the summer. Didn't really follow the Senior B competition so closely, but I am trying to hammer myself down with the Grand Prix series. So as I'm doing my recaps, I might miss some pieces of information that are really important from the early season. But if that ever happens, feel free to just let me know, send me a message, write down a comment, and I'd be more than happy to look into things. And then the last thing I wanted to say was, I'm very pressed on time this weekend that Skid America is happening. I am working, I have some family obligations, and I'm preparing to go to Skate Canada next week. So this recap will be filmed in chunks. So you right now you see me on Thursday filming the intro. I will probably look different during different segments of this recap. So I hope you all can understand. Maybe things will go back to normal when I film the recap for Skate Canada International next week. But thank you so much, and then I hope you enjoyed this recap. Okay, so I will be filming these segments of the video in the order that they occur at the actual competition. So the first discipline to be completed at Skate America and have the results finalized are the pairs. So here are the results on the screen. Let's take a look. The Chinese pair Chang Peng and Yang Jin win the competition with a total score of over 200 points. And then Russians Daria Pavlyuchenko and Denis Kodikin win the silver medal, and Americans Haven Denny and Brandon Frazier win the bronze medal with a total score of 192.70. We have two additional American pairs rounding out the top five, Jessica Callalang and Brian Johnson, as well as Ashley Kane Gribble and Timothy LeDuc finishing in fifth after being third in the short program. We'll talk more about that later. But overall, I'd say it was enjoyable competition to watch. No one was really technically perfect in the free skate, but the top three definitely had respectable performances. And we also have to remember that because this is the first major competition of the season, not all the athletes want to go all out and peak at the first competition of the season. You really want to do well enough to qualify for the Grand Prix Final and slowly build up momentum so that you could peak at either your country's national championships or four continents or worlds, ideally. So that being said, I think a lot of good performances happened here, especially with the winners of the gold medal, the Chinese pair, Chang Peng and Yang Jin. I always enjoy watching this pair skate. I think they bring a very lighthearted quality to their skating and I think a big part of that is their music selection. They really choose music that suits their personality. My personal favorite programs from them though however are My Drag from a few seasons ago and also Ophelia from last year. But these programs are just as authentic to them. They do a good job of keeping the program, the short program, super lighthearted and making the free skate a little more serious, a little more classical, but not too intense because 
that's not authentic to them. They smile to the audience and they really are engaging with each other and that's what I really like to see. They were not technically perfect, they did not have the highest tech score in the free skate. However, they did have a a lead in program component marks, quite a lead actually. Their program component scores for the free skate was about 66 and the next highest were 62. So that's a nice four point cushion which gives them some room to make some errors. They had a pop on their side by side jumps and she fell on the throw triple loop which was unfortunate. But speaking of the loop, one thing that I liked seeing about that was that um, Yang Jin went up and helped her up after she fell and hit the boards. That was just so endearing to see. I think that just shows how much of a friendship they have or a connection with each other and that helps with their overall skating. That being said, they still did well enough to win the competition. Their lifts are amazing. They, end, they always end the program strong. They do so many difficult and good transitions, and not just in and out of the technical elements, it's woven into the choreography, which I really appreciate. And they have actually kind of built a reputation for themselves over the past few seasons, unfortunately, of being kind of a hot and cold pair. I think that's mainly because they've had some more technical errors in the past few seasons. They're they're not as crystal clean every time they go out and compete. But here's the thing, they never have a disastrous skate or they rarely do. So I wouldn't really label them as hot and cold. They're always good enough in my opinion. And it's always on one or two technical elements. Rarely do we see an issue with the lifts. And maybe some people started to say that about them recently because they lost the US classic to Ashley and Tim but that was way earlier in the season they could have just needed the additional month or two to continue training their technical elements but kudos to them winning the gold here means they have a good chance at qualifying for the grand prix final in December so I'm going to cross my fingers for them because I really love this pair in second place we have Daria Pavlichenko and Denis Kodikin from Russia and they also did a really respectable job I think they really impressed me in the short program. I thought they were spot on, really paying attention to the music. They're really dynamic skaters and they followed their choreography really well. Daria has amazing extension on her lifts and her partner like lifts her into some very unique and very difficult transitions into the lifts. Sometimes they're so scary that I wonder if about their safety, but they're able to pull it off and I am impressed. In the free skate, they did have a fall on one of their throw jumps and they did receive negative grade of execution marks on their opening side-by-side -side triple flips. I think it's mainly because Daria had an edge call on her triple flip and maybe because the distance was so far from each other that could have contributed to the lower GOE marks as well. But overall, a really respectable skate from them and I expect them to grow really strongly and rise in the ranks really quickly. I can just tell it's a matter of time before they become a really big threat on the international scene. They are really well matched. They have, I think, what benefits the most is the height difference, which means they can do bigger moves, which means higher grade of execution marks and also they have they already have a good understanding of musicality which should help their program component marks grow as they mature and become more sophisticated with newer programs so this is definitely a russian pair team to look out for in the future next up let's talk about the americans haven denny and brandon frazier winning the bronze medal this was a surprise to me but i'm still so happy it's surprising for a few reasons first is that I think many of us expected reigning U.S. national champions Ashley Kane uh, Gribble and Timothy LeDuc to win a medal here, but no, it was Haven Denny and Brandon Fraser. Not only did they win a medal, they skated two really nice programs. It started with a short program. I'd say everything was pretty spot on. They have an amazing throw triple twist, by the way. <laughs> it's really good. And the jumps were the, the throw jumps when landed, oof, they look so good. Except in the free program, I think the throw triple sow cow, where she had 
some uneasiness with the landing. She put her foot down and it looked a little wobbly, but she stayed on her feet. The biggest feat, though, of the free program was that Haven Denny landed her side-by-side -side triple sow cows. Wow, that was amazing. I believe it was popped in the short program, which was unfortunate because everything else about that short program is perfect. And they stood up <laughs> on their side-by-side -side combination. So it was a double axle Euler, I think double sow cow. Yes, unfortunately, the double axle was called under-rotated and given negative grade of execution marks, but they stayed on their feet. I think that's a really big step up from them falling or totally popping on a combination. So kudos to them. What you'll notice about Haven and Brandon's programs is that it builds really nicely because their programs are choreographed to work towards their strengths. They have amazing lifts. Brandon has super, super tight control over Haven when he lifts her up. They're a really good match. And Haven's able to get into some really nice positions while up in the air. And she just looks really regal. The Lion King program, I think, was a fan favorite. They brought it back. This is a more sophisticated interpretation of the movie soundtrack, which I think I prefer a little more. It's less cheesy and it still has the same feel that suits them. This was a very emotional program for them at the end because they just did such a good job and they've struggled for so long. I'd have to say another part of their skating that I think is really good is all of their transitions in and out of the elements, lifts, jumps, and uh, the dead spiral. Really good, really great start and ending poses for both Haven and Brandon. That really shows how strong Brandon is, that he can hold her <laughs> to start and end a program while standing still on the ice. It's really impressive. I'm really happy for them. They did have the second highest tech score of their free skate, so that's something to note. And then their program components for the free skate were also in line with the Russian. So it shows that when they're clean they can compete with uh, some of the other top teams. We just need to get that consistency down, and then I think they'll be truly rewarded for the program component marks, which I think are usually low-balled because of their lack of uh, the technical jumps, mainly being the side-by-side -side jumps not being landed. So totally happy for them. I'm also really happy for the American pair who finished in fourth place here, Jessica Callalang and Brian Johnson. They are becoming one of my new favorite U.S. pairs because Deanna Stilato no longer represents the United States. I am now transferring my love to Jessica Calling and Brian Johnson. Yes, I understand that they have a lot of technical issues to sort through, quite a few falls and some pops in both the short and long. Here's the thing. If you take away the jumps, though, I really enjoyed their program. There's something very secure about the two, in their basic skating skills. Like they're very muscular and lean at the same time. That is just nice to watch them do basic skating. That also makes every move that they perform in their programs look really strong. I think you want to see a really strong element from them. Look at their uh, triple twist, especially in the long program. One of the few, if not only, to receive a level four, which is so hard to do. So if they can master a level four triple twist, that just shows how good they are in their raw skating ability. They just need to get the jumps down. I think Brian needs to look work a little bit more on the solo jumps, but you can tell that there's also a very intimate and romantic connection between the two that it makes it really enjoyable to watch. The program's also well suited to their strengths. Their free program is definitely really romantic. And just like the Chinese, it comes off as very authentic to them. It's, it's very nice to watch. They have also really strong lifts. I'm saying that about a lot of pairs, but really we're mainly talking about the top pairs here. Lifts are part of the technical score in pair skating. So those need to be done so well to get high grades of execution marks. And I'm really excited to see them next week at Skate Canada. They have two assignments, and who knows, maybe they'll skate even better there because I'm in the audience, but that would be great to see. Next up, we have the Americans reigning national champions, Ashley Kane Gribble and Timothy LeDuc. I think it's safe to say that this was a very disappointing 
outcome for them, mainly because they were so vocal on the fact that they wanted to win a gold medal, if not challenge, or they wanted to win a medal, if not challenge for the gold at Skate America. And I, I actually think they got too ahead of themselves. The short program, they fell on the throw triple Lutz and still were in third place. So they were rewarded with some really nice program component marks. And the free skate, I don't think they could have been rewarded with those same marks by the judges because you could tell after the first few mistakes happened, again, a fall on throw triple Lutz, Ashley Kane singled one of the jumps. You could just tell they were overthinking their program. They were already disappointed in themselves, especially Ashley. She looked a little too serious at some points of that free program when she could have been more focused in the choreography and maybe a little bit of Tim as well. And then unfortunately, they had um, a mistake on the lift. I believe it was the axle lift at the end of their free skates. So that did not help them with the points. And it's really unfortunate that they're the last placing American pair here. They have another Grand Prix to prove themselves, but they won't be qualifying for the final. And yeah, they're going to have to <laughs> go back to the drawing board and see what they did wrong here. I believe it was a little bit mental in their mind, although there's a very technical reason why Ashley fell on the throw triple Lutz twice, but I think they could work on focusing more and not getting ahead of themselves, and maybe they can have better results later on in the season. This is only the start. It does not define their season. They can do a better job of showing off their programs, which are not bad, by the way, at their next Grand Prix or National. So that's all I have to say about that. And we'll see. I'm going to watch the men's now, and I'm so excited to see how they do. Okay, next up is the men's discipline. I just finished watching all of their free skates. Wow, it is getting late at night. I'm losing natural light. I'm still at work. I'm getting a little tired. So I apologize if this segment of the recap is going to be a little more quick and less detailed. But I did watch the free skates and let's discuss it. As you can see by the results on the screen, Nathan Chen won the competition with just under 300 points. Jason Brown of America won the silver medal. Yay, go Team USA. And Dmitry Aliyev from Russia wins the bronze medal here. Keegan Messing of Canada places fourth. Unfortunate for him, not winning a medal. And then Kazuki Tomono of Japan places in fifth. And Boying Jin of China rounds out the top six. So I will say, overall, I think the free skates looked quite messy from the mistakes from the men. Now this is actually not totally uncommon because a lot of the men in figure skating go for high risk, high reward jumps, which are the quads, because when you land them, you get rewarded with a lot of technical points. Whereas you can be really held back if you're a good skater and you don't attempt a quad. The example against that is Jason Brown. We'll go into that later, but I did see a lot of mistakes from quad attempts and that was unfortunate. Thankfully, it all ended well with one of my favorite skaters, Nathan Chen of the United States, two-time reigning world champion. Now, I'll start with the short program yesterday. I like the program. It's a little different for him, but still something that generally suits his style of skating, which I do appreciate. I thought the jumps looked really scary watching online, but my friend Aaron Conley, hi if you're watching this, said that in person, the jumps did not seem scary at all. So maybe it could have been the camera angle. Scary or not scary, it did look like he at least had to fight to land them. He went for the quad LUTs. That was great. Um, we didn't see the classic quad LUTs triple toe combination, but he added the combination later on in the program. And he also did a quad toe. That's where the combination was to get the bonus points. Really smart of him to have that really high score of over 100 points in the short program. The free skate, I thought his jumps looked a lot more secure when they were landed. I think he had a couple mistakes, nothing that was jarring or interrupted the flow of the program. I believe one of the mistakes was popping a quad toe into a double toe, which, you know, it was still landed. Uh, we just know it's supposed to be a quad toe, so we know it was a mistake. And then the quad toe Euler 
a double flip. I think that's supposed to be a triple flip. So just little things like that. But otherwise, I like his free skate a lot more. It's the medley of Elton John songs and I appreciate it. The moment for everybody watching online and in the arena in Vegas was right before that step sequence. He really got into it. He played towards the crowd. Those slide movements and then breaking down to the music is everything to me. And his skating overall looks really fast and he's growing into more of a performer. So I, I really like seeing Nathan Chen grow as a skater over the years. Looking at his scores from the protocols, he has a program component score of 94 in the free skate. I think that actually sounds a little high. This is coming from someone who likes Nathan Chen. I think there's room for that program to grow. I think there's time for him to get comfortable with the nuances to the choreography, although the choreo choreography is great with Shaylin Bourne from Canada. Actually, I think uh, Marie France choreographed the free skate. A Canadian, <laughs> his Canadian choreographers. There is time for him to get better. And even if they're perfect, I'm not sure if it's worthy of like a 10 or a high nine. So I think that Nathan Chen deserved to win. Program component scores are really high, 94. Let's compare that to someone like Jason Brown, who won the silver medal here. No quad, but his skating skills are so raw and beautiful, reminiscent of Patrick Chan. Beautiful edges, clean stroking, especially in the free skate, you can really see his ability, skating abilities when he's skating to that Schindler's List program. Oh, so beautiful. Transitions, movements, and not just technical elements, but choreographic sequence, depth of edge, Ugh. his spins, and when he does the um, Russian split, the flexibility, it's all so good. So I would actually have the program component score between Jason and Nathan be a little closer together. Like I said before, Nathan received 94, Jason received 90. But you know, that is Jason's strong suit. He needs to keep at it. His free program was a delightful surprise because in the short program he popped the axle which is not something you want to do but he came back in the free skate still no quad and he's proving that right now he doesn't need a quad to win a medal at a competition will this be the case at every competition after skate america most likely not i'm pretty sure jason brown and his team have a strategy that they're working towards and it sounds like he's still practicing the quad sao cow at home during training sessions so hoping that goes well but yeah he only had one slight mistake which was doubling the triple loop that's what i saw in the free skate it was intended to be a triple but it was a double otherwise the rest of his program looked really good that ending spin the flexibility gosh he's just a gorgeous spinner i'd be curious to see how he does later on in the season what his strategy will be with adding in the quad obviously it worked for him here to not do it but i'm not sure that's always going to be the case so that's something to think about and then we have dmitry aliyev from russia winning the bronze medal he was second after the short program, and that was really impressive because he was also clean. He did a triple let's triple toe combination to start off. I think the music choice in the short program suited his personal personal style a little a little better. In the free skate, I just didn't feel he was connecting with the music. I understand that there were some technical errors on the jumps as well. He was far from clean, but besides that, it just seemed like he was just following the choreography and not really skating along with it and it's unfortunate because Johnny Weir did say this so I will quote him but I did think the same thing he has a beautiful body for skating when he lands the jumps sometimes his back and legs are in such a beautiful position he's very tall and muscular that he can look very statuesque on the ice when he lands his jumps when he's doing something really well but that program music in the free skate just wasn't doing it for me but we know his potential because we saw what he was able to put down in the short program so dimitri is some 
one that maybe even Jason Brown or someone else needs to look out for at the next Grand Prix competition. Because if he skates perfectly clean, he does attempt a lot of quads. Let me check out the protocols here in the free skates. Yeah, so he, he only did a triple let's to open, but he did do two additional quad toes. But he is attempting the quad let's, and that can gain you a lot of points if done well. Next up, we have Keegan Messing, and the highlight for Keegan is definitely his short program to Ed Sheeran's song, Perfect. It was the slow dance uh, with his wife on his wedding day, and it was a very emotional performance. Really emotional. Did he do a quad? Let's see if I remember. Yeah, quad toe, triple toe, but everything else was perfect. He had amazing knee bend from what I remember in that short program. And I really like the music because it's a little bit slower and it allows him not to rush through his elements because Keegan likes the high energy. He likes performing, feeding off the audience that sometimes he lets that adrenaline get ahead of himself and he misses a jump that he normally would have no problem with. So the short program music, I think is really good for him. I also love that it's something different. His free skate is not something as different <laughs> for him as I would like, but you know, he seems to be the kind of guy who would like to skate to Guns N' Roses. I don't think the focus or the commitment to the music was there in the free skate, unfortunately. He did have some nice moments. He did attempt a quad but he also missed some other jumps, like I believe the axle. And I think he just opened up with a triple lutz when he was hoping to do a quad. And the program started okay, but you could just tell he wasn't as committed towards the end of it because it's really unfortunate he was in a position to win a medal after the short program. But fourth place is not that bad. His season is not over. And also we have to remember that Keegan has been going through some rough life experiences lately and kudos to him for even showing up to this competition it must be so hard to focus on training and competing when such difficult things are going on in your life an example though of how good his actually raw skating is so in the free skate he plays eighth i believe which is pretty low but if you look at his program component marks he got a score of 81 a lot of the men who placed above him in the free skate scored in the low to mid 70s who didn't win a medal. So Keegan does have the ability to make some mistakes and still do well because of his performance quality. And he actually has nice edge quality and amazing speed in his programs, but the jumps have to be there. And all of them, especially if you're not going to if you're only going to do one quad. But Keegan, I'm wishing him the best, and I hope he takes some time to uh, do what's best for him or to heal or to grieve, however that may be. The next skater I will talk about is from Japan, Kazuki Tomono, and he was a surprise rise in the ranks in this competition. So he was eighth after the short program and fourth in the free to finish fifth overall. I do remember his free skate a lot better because it was to Moulin Rouge and I gotta say the mistakes he did have quite a bit of mistakes but he ended the program so strong that the audience in Las Vegas there at Skate America was so loud and supportive he sold that program I think I wrote some notes about it here let me take a look yeah he ended the program on such a high note the spins and he was selling his performance and he's actually has he actually has a beautiful body line on the ice and everything looks really good when he's clean but his jumps were kind of messy but kudos to him for ending the program so strongly and then the last man I will touch on would be Boyang Jin from China Lupita I know he's your favorite but I'm sorry he just didn't do well at this competition the quads were off he was falling under rotations um, were called and also I, I don't think these programs are for him and it's unfortunate because Boyang Jin not known as someone with great skating skills or someone who's an artist at all he has been getting better with the second mark 
of his skating over the past few seasons. I think his programs this year, at least how he skated them here at Skate America, seem to be backpedaling him a little bit. So hopefully a change can be made later on in the season so he can execute these programs really well and perform to the best of his abilities because once upon a time, he was able to land four quads and make it seem like no problem in the free skate. In fact, I I say bring back your Spider-Man program. That was very enjoyable and one of my favorite programs from you, Boy Jin. <laughs> okay, so I am going to head home, watch Ice Dance and I stands the free dance and ladies the free skate so I'll probably try to film those recaps in a little bit. Thank you. The next discipline is ice dance and I just finished watching the programs from the top four finishers at Skate America and here are the total results. Americans Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue win the competition with a total score of 209.55 and Russians Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin win the silver medal with a total score of 206.57. Canadians Laurence Fournier Batry and Nikolaj Sorensen win the first Grand Prix medal with a total score of 197.53. And then Olivia Smart and Adrian Diaz from Spain finish fourth with a total score of 191.01. So I've said this many times, I'll say it again, I am, I stand stupid, please forgive me. You can't make fun of me because I said it all, myself already. Usually with I stands, I like to follow my friend Erin Conley on Twitter. Her live updates are always the best and actually really helpful. She needs to commentate for NBC, like seriously, with Tanith White. That needs to happen. But I'm going to try my best to provide commentary. Just know it's not coming from an expert, it's coming from a very casual fan. So we'll see how technical I get. I will give this a try. So Madison Hubble and Zachary Donahue from America win the competition again. Not so much of a surprise. I think, if anything, it was a little shocking that they lost the free dance to the Russians by just, like, I think two tenths of a point. So it's such a small margin. But still, that was a message from the judges that maybe their free dance isn't so well received yet, or it's an indicator that the program still needs to grow because this is their first competition out this season. Normally, they like to go to U.S. Classic International or International Classic, whichever one it is, in Utah, and that's where they like to get feedback from the judges on the program. That didn't happen this year, so that's a risk you take competing for the first time at a major competition. But in my mind, I think the program could only get better from here. But let's start off on a high note, which I think was their rhythm dance. It was very playful, very much playing the role of Marilyn Monroe. Madison does such a great job of that. Interesting choice of music. I know a lot of heads were turned when hearing the song lyric, I think it goes, I will always love you, daddy. So that is a choice. <laughs> and if you did not know this year, the required theme for the rhythm dance is Broadway and the required pattern dance is Finstep. I'm not an expert at either Broadway or Finstep, but I will say it did seem that Madison and Zach were the ones who performed the Finstep dance pattern the best from my non-expert eyes. That seems to be a hard one for a lot of teams to pull off, but maybe things will change later on in the season. The free dance, I don't know what to say. I think my opinions are very mixed. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I think the mixing was interesting. Voiceovers, not my favorite part. And I do think it's worth noting, Anne-Marie, my friend who was there, thank you for letting us know that Zachary was actually suffering from bronchitis on the day of the free dance. So that kind of explains why he looked a little winded by the end of that program. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Twitter because I tweet out some of my thoughts and a lot of you are really good about responding with what you think. And I just said this, just watch Hubble and Don Who's free dance from Skate America and I don't know what to think. I don't hate it, but don't love it. My opinion could change once I see a more polished version at nationals. They are both great actors though and they portrayed the characters well. I'm I stand stupid, so forgive my ignorance, but they have amazing skating qualities, but I feel like their movements weren't as sharp or crisp here. I could, it could just be the fact that it's their first competition of the season or that they need more time to grow with this music. And let me read some of the responses. 
let's see. Someone said, I find the music cut very jarring and the sequence around the crescendo in Shallow doesn't work for me. Someone else said, I just find it weird. I'm assuming they're going for a love story, but the choreography doesn't have them very connected. And there are a lot of movements, moments, they choose to look at the judges instead of each other. There's just something off there. Let's see. My friend Shreya said, I found the rotational lift at the height of the shallow really boring, really missed a moment to be dramatic as Gaga vocalizes. I hope they change it to something more acrobatic and interesting or move the twizzles to that section to create a moment. Well, yeah, Anne Marie said, I liked it, but think this has the potential to get significantly better. I agree. Don't know if they mentioned it in the coverage, but Zach has had a really bad case of bronchitis all week and was throwing up before the free dance. That's really unfortunate. So a lot of opinions there. It did seem like the crowd wasn't so into it as they had hoped, but it's the beginning of the season. Things could change. Next up, we have Russians. Oh, let me look at their name. Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin. I actually really like both of their programs. We'll start with the free dance because it's to Justin Timberlake's Cry Me River. That song I was obsessed with as a teenager, <laughs> far from being one right now. But I thought it was very unique, very dynamic, very different. I think they were sharper on their feet and crisper with their moves than Madison and Zach were. They just seem to have just a little bit more polish, but we also have to note that they got a late start to preparing for the season because I think Stepanova had a back injury, which you can kind of tell in the rhythm dance that they weren't as prepared for this. But what was their rhythm dance? Do I remember what it was? Yes, because it was very theatrical to Moulin Rouge. Costumes were very, very beautiful and over the top. Yeah, I think they did a good job of performing that rhythm dance. Let's see what notes did I write here. Oh, they ended with a kiss. That's something that everyone noted. They had a mild costume malfunction that they took care of really quickly and seamlessly. Then I'd say the curve lift at the end of the rhythm dance, just right on the music to the part of your song, did it for me. Kind of a cheesy moment, but I liked it. And also, someone told me on Twitter, because I said that some of these programs, the rhythm dances were cheesy, with Broadway comes cheese. That's something that we all have to accept, myself included. And I think that's all I have to say. Really surprising that they want the free dance but it kind of makes sense with Hubble and Donahue's free dance not being too well received and the fact that it's their first outing with the programs. Okay, I'm so excited to talk about this next team, Laurence fournier Bautry and Nicolas Sorensen of Canada. They used to represent Denmark, but now they are Canadians as they compete and it is great i'm surprised that they haven't won a grand prix medal before because they are a really solid team i think they have a good shot at fighting for the silver medal at canadian nationals this year obviously depending on whether weaver and poje compete but i really enjoy both of their programs theirs might be one of my favorites so far i haven't seen very many so that could change as i watch more of the grand prix events that are coming up but i'd have to say that I was a big fan of their free dance. Costuming was perfect. A lot of things were executed really well. I just think they need to work on some polishing here and there throughout the programs, maybe some of the transitional moves in and out of the elements. Let me see, what did I write on Twitter? So I said, Laurence Fournier, Bautry, and Nicolas Sorensen are such a delight. Their rhythm dance at Skate America was so cute and enjoyable. Their skating is really smooth with nice ice coverage. A little cheesy in some parts, but I don't mind. They'll want to work on getting their levels, which is true. Uh, someone commented and said that they loved that they embraced the campy nature of Broadway. And someone else said, this season, a little cheese is needed in every rhythm dance, which is true. I'm trying to remember... I did like their rhythm dance to the Bonnie and Clyde number, and oh, I love the dress. I love the red and black and the changing tones from front and underneath. It reminds me of Christian Louboutin, so very classy, very elegant look. I think they were just very playful. I think all of the dance teams have to be playful in the rhythm dance. 
yeah, I'm sorry I don't have much more to say about them, but I do like them, that is for sure. Next up, I want to talk about Olivia Smart and Adrian Diaz from Spain. Interesting program choices, but that kind of seems to be their brand. They skated to Grease number in the rhythm dance and then had a circus theme for the free dance. Not my cup of tea <laughs> for either one, but they are an audience favorite. They are crowd pleasers. They had great energy in the rhythm dance. I think I would like to see them commit a little more throughout the entire rhythm dance, especially around the fin step because it got a little slow, I believe. And I'm just going to quote Tanith White on this comment for their free dance. I did like their curve lift a lot, but uh, Tanith made a good point that they structured their free dance to have a slow midsection so they could show off some character development because it's a sad love story between the clowns and the dolls. I think that's about it. Well, I tried. I really did. We'll see if I have more to say about Ice Dance next week when I'm attending Skate Canada Live. Guys, <laughs> I made it the final segment of this recap. I'm so mentally exhausted. I do not recommend working a full Saturday and Sunday and trying to follow figure skating at the same time. It's really difficult, but I do want to still try to provide some commentary. I apologize if it's not as thorough as the rest of this video, which is unfortunate because ladies is usually my favorite discipline to follow. But we do have to note that some interesting things happened because there was a lot of movement overall in the standings from the short program to the overall score. So let's take a look at the final results. Russian skater Anna Sherbakova wins a competition with a whopping score of 227.76, and that's after being fourth in the short program segment of the competition. American Brady Tunnell drops down one spot after the short program to win the silver medal with a total score of 216.14. Elizaveta Tutemisheva from Russia wins the bronze medal after being fifth in the short. Her total score was 205.97. Unfortunately, Kaori Sakamoto drops down to fourth, and then we have Korean skater Unsu Lim in fifth, and then Wakaba Higuchi from Japan rounding out the top six. So I think it's pretty obvious a big reason for all of the movements in the free skate is the technical score, and more specifically, quads and triple axles. We are seeing so many of those these days from female skaters. And, you know, it's sometimes a controversial topic because everyone's thinking, is it too much for the younger ladies if that's what they need to do to succeed because that might not be the healthiest on their body. And I got to say, I can see both sides of the situation. I know it's boring to be the person in the middle, but I genuinely can see both sides. I think our sport is changing and moving in a new direction. And if you want to be competitive, you got to bring the big guns, which are quads and triple axles. I don't think that this trend will last forever. It could definitely phase out. Only time will tell. But for now, Anna Sherbakova from Russia won the competition because she performed two quad lutzes in that free skate. She opened the program with both of them, one in combination. And oh my gosh, my mind was blown. That is so hard to do, but it gains you so many points. So the base value of a quad LUTs is 11.5. And for the triple LUTs, I believe it's a 5.9. So big, huge difference in the amount of points you receive. And then you add on top grade of execution points for how well or not well you do those jumps. Anna did them well, so she was really rewarded. Her program was not technically perfect. When you look at the protocol, she received two under rotations towards the end of her program, I believe on... Yeah, the triple loop and the triple sao cow on the combo in the sequence. But if you're watching her program, it was actually quite enjoyable because she's just flying across the ice, throwing off the jumps like they were nothing. She does have to work on her artistry aspect of her skating. That's expected with how young she is. She also looks really fragile. But it's all in the tech score for her because if you compare her program component marks with the rest of the world, they are not on par with some of the best female skaters out there right now. So she's going to rely heavily on those quad lutzes in order to place really well at competitions. She was in fourth after the short program because only did a double axel and had a mistake on her combination. Under rotation and creative execution points were lost 
because of the poor landing. So really, she's a skater that's going to come back very often in the free skate. So, wow, that's just something to think about. And it's going to be interesting to see how she does in comparison with another skater later on in the season who also does quads. But Brady Tunnell of the United States wins a silver medal here. This is a great comeback for her. She had a broken foot in the off season, I believe, so she's still recovering from that. And also last year at Skate America, she missed the podium. So that was really unfortunate. I'd say this was a great showing for Brady overall. Not only the result, but how she skated. I love, love that short program of hers. I think the choreography was so perfect for her and she paid attention to all the little nuances in the music. She was also really fast. Her posture looks a lot better this year and the way she carries herself is great. Overall, I think her skating has elevated compared to seasons past and I just love seeing that for her. Love the short program more than the free skate, but the free skate is not bad. Softer, princess e music, but Brady carrying herself better than she has before makes the program and the overall package look good. Her secret weapon is a triple lutz, triple toe. She did that in the short and the long program. Totally clean, positive grade of execution marks. And it's great to see someone <laughs> winning the competition without a triple axle or a quad. But to do that, you do have to have the PCS, program opponent marks, which Brady's were really good here. She's finally being rewarded because her short program score was super high, 75. I believe that's the highest she's ever had. So kudos to her. Let me analyze the protocols a little more. Yeah, so her program component marks in the free skate were 69, whereas Anna's were 67, almost 68, which I'm not sure I agree with. I think there should be more of a gap there between the two. And then Elizaveta Tuktamisheva's is quite a bit lower at 64. And let's talk about that. So Elizaveta Tutemisheva from Russia wins the bronze medal here. She does three clean triple axles the entire competition. She's like, Rika Kihira who? Just kidding. Rika is awesome. You all know I think that. <laughs> but yeah, triple axles have never looked easier for Elizaveta. Short, two in the long program, one in combination. The thing with Elizaveta is the choreography is pretty bare in all of her programs in the past few seasons. It's really unfortunate and really hard for me to say this because I do love Elizaveta as a skater. I think her skating is better than her programs. I want to say I, I think she can handle more difficult choreography if it was given to her, but for some reason we're just kind of seeing some basic movements, a lot of upper body and arm movements over full body choreography moves. I don't know if I'm explaining myself well, but that's how I feel. So she could be skating to anything. I love her attitude on the ice. Triple axles look great. I'm not sure if what she brings to the table right now with the multiple triple axles is enough to keep her competitive in Russia. So. We'll now move on to Kaori Sakamoto. I think oh, it's really unfortunate she lost the opportunity to win a medal here with that free skate. Multiple pops, which is really unfortunate. I think she had such a great short program. She could even have been first, in my opinion. Yeah, weren't the scores really close? Let's look here. Yeah, Brady Tunnell, 75.10, and then Koyori Sakamoto, 73.25. And Koyori actually won in PCS over Brady Tunnell. She had a 34, and Brady had 33. So that just shows how great of a skater Koyori is. So fast, so dynamic. I think everyone on Twitter I've been seeing lately say that she's had she has one of the best triple loops in the business i agree with that i think she has one of the best jumps strongest legs powerful crossovers the matrix free program i do like for her i can't decide if it's the program or if she was no longer dedicated to the choreography after the mistakes because i felt like she wasn't as invested in the program because she knew how she had given the title away and she needed to be perfect to win the silver or bronze, I think. But unfortunately, Pops 
do ruin your chances at rising in the ranks in the free program. So that's unfortunate, but Kaori is still a great skater. I think she's going to learn from this experience, and she's always a fighter. So one bad competition never seems to get her down. So I have faith in her performance for the rest of the season. And then we have Unsu Lim from Korea. I watched her program last night live, and I will say Unsu is young, but she looks like, I don't know, like sophisticated, but not too mature for her age. Her presence on the ice is so delightful. She stood up on a lot of the jumps. They looked really tight for me. Let me look at the protocols. I didn't analyze her free skate yet. Maybe some were under rotated. Yeah, she received a under rotation on the opening combination and then a downgrade on a triple flip later on. Program component marks in the mid sevens. She seems to get around that range in PCS when I think it could go higher. Maybe that means that she has to skate bigger and have more of a presence to the audience. I think that would probably help. And then last up, we have Wakaba Higuchi from Japan. Really unfortunate because she was in a meddling position after the short program. The bronze, I think I tweeted out that it was weird not to see her skate to an aerobic piece because last year the Energia program was one of my favorites. But like her Japanese teammate Kaori, way too many mistakes in the free skate. A fall and then pops will not do you any favors. Let me see what my tweets were about her. I said, a technically sound short program from Wakaba Hukuchi at Skate America. I gotta get used to her not skating to an aerobic number, but this program is nice and different. Not sure it's my favorite, but she sure gives it until the very end with that fantastic slide. So that is her short program, but I did watch her free. I do think that her free skate has potential. Bad day at the office for both Japanese ladies, but they are both better skaters than the performances they put at Skate America. I'd be interested to see what the scoring looks like with the Japanese skaters being totally clean against maybe some of the Russian ladies who are younger, not as sophisticated, but still have quads and triple axles. Maybe later in the season, we'll get to analyze how the PCS compares between those two. The last skater I did want to mention because it was someone who I personally was looking forward to see at Skate America, and it's Canadian skater Veronique Malay. I just think she's such a joy to watch. She's lower in the standings because she doesn't have the difficult triple jumps. She is recovering from an injury that has plagued her career, but it seems like she's back for the right reasons. She skates with joy. She doesn't have a lot of mistakes, but that's because her jumps are easier to do. Love the short program. I believe it's to Cindy Lauper's True Colors, one of my favorite songs, executed really well. Kudos for doing the triple flip, and I look forward to seeing her skate at Canadian Nationals. Well, friends, I did it. I finished. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Look out for both a recap and a vlog next week as I go to Skate Canada. I'll see you then. Thank you. Goodbye.